All this is Dr. Mubeen Sayyid from drbean.com. Welcome to one more show. This is a Sunday morning. Now we have the sunrise. It is really cold out here as well. So I quickly went and made my coffee. This used to be a immune system picture, but this is so small that it doesn't even look correctly. So I'll, I'll make the Teespring thing today for the... Um, for this one and then I would put it up. So give me one second. All right, let's stop. <clears throat> I'm going to start from the top. Mrs. Carather says, you're too generous. Hope you spend lovely t offline time outdoors soon. Absolutely. So my fun will be that I'm going to go out with my um, iPad and I'll paint or try to paint. <laughs> so Buzz Night Gear says, uh, Dr. Bean, I have a vulnerable kid with multiple disorders. I heard this Omicron is causing kids to go to hospital. Is this the case? So I discussed that um, in my last two discussions today. Most of the children that are in the hospital, they said were uh, out of abundance of caution. So here, um, but children with comorbidities should be protected a lot. So if you see here, this is from South Africa. Maluliki said, I hope I'm pronouncing the name correctly. I do not know if she is a she or a he. Uh, said, healthcare workers could be acting out of an abundance of caution. So they would rather have a child under care for a day or two than having a child at home and complicating. But we really need to wait for the evidence, she said. So Maluliki is a woman, uh, hopefully a doctor. So this is the situation there. And even in the other report that we see from Tashwan, they said that there were no COVID-related deaths among 34 admissions in the pediatric COVID wards over the last two weeks. So at least from the data point of view, it, see, it says that the patients who are going to the hospital, one, they're trying to just keep them there for to observe them. And secondly, there are no deaths. That doesn't mean that there cannot be deaths in the vulnerable or uh, um, with the comorbidities. So comorbid, uh, patients of any age should be very well taken care of. It's a lot of responsibility, but hopefully I am hanging a lot of my hope, my ha hat of my hope on this virus. Hopefully we will soon be out of this whole situation if Omicron is what it is so far. Then, so some more time of keeping your guard up. And do everything. Don't listen to anyone who says masks work and don't work. Do every single thing that can be done to protect. And that is important. Regardless of what anyone says. Claire says, what a treat. Omicron may be the Christmas gift for, to the world possible. Yes. Gold Country says, what does my new antibody test result really mean? IgG 1.74 and reactive, I was infected 11 months ago. Normally, many tests use IgG of 1 as a cutoff level. Above 1 is actively available and below 1 is, or 1 or below is kind of not reactive. Above 1 and 1.7 is not a very high number. But what it means is that you still have memory cells sitting somewhere and continuing to make antibodies at a very low level, which is fine. It is a good thing. They would wake up very quickly if you got exposed. So again, not a medical advice, just discussion mechanisms. Claire says, Margaret, thank you for your supporting King Me. Definitely. And her support is always so generous. Um, Christy says, hi from Florida. Hi, back to you. I'm going to keep my cartoon up. 
<laughs> I like this cartoon. I actually drew this just before the talk this morning. You know, I wanted to make the 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 little O, the Omicron. I wanted to make him with that troll face. Remember, there is a on Reddit there was a troll face. So I wanted to make it like a troll face. He's like, oh, whatever. <laughs> that would have been fun. I hope that this pleasure that we are getting with the Omicron's behavior is a permanent one and it continues to improve and it's not just our few days of happiness. <laughs> Roller Girl says clever. Yep. I was first going to write some companies' names here. Then I thought the only thing that happens is they come after me afterwards. Eric Doc says, is this real life? Am I dreaming? <laughs> no. And yes, you're dreaming. We are here in your dream. Imagine how much, Eric Doc, you love Dr. Bean, that we and the cool beans are in your dreams. So Nanchiska says, what about con countries where cases and deaths are going up, such as South Korea? Is this the new variant? Don't know yet. Uh, unless they do the sequencing and tell us, and I'll look into that. We were just, all of us, so focused on South Korea. or oh, sorry, you know, South Africa. So I'm going to see the question. If you are going to write a question, please just put lots of cues or question marks, something that I can identify out of all the uh, discussions. Christopher Robinson says, other reports, the number of people previously infected is 2.39 times those infected for the first time. Does this indicate that the defense by the innate arm is better than the from the adaptive arm? So you saw my talk about this report, that um, the protection, as much as they say 2.39 times more infectivity risk, it is like this, if number if somebody is infected one person and then there are two people infected that is a 100 percent increase similarly if there are four people infected then that is a 400 percent increase on the other other hand if there are 100,000 people infected and then 100,004 that is not even a fraction so what these are this report so one thank you for the researchers that they did this report but second, if you look at my video, I discussed from a, a cool bean, not a cool bean, a, an epidemiologist on Twitter had said that he looked at the same data in the perspective of how vaccine efficacy is seen. And the efficacy, then I, I shared that information, the efficacy of a previous infection dropped from 84%. So, for example, if somebody was infected with Wuhan variant, then came, let's say, beta variant, South African variant, then the efficacy, that means a person previously infected, was 84%. Not This is not the right way to put efficacy. Efficacy is a different way to do that. But there was 84% efficacy in protection. Omicron's efficacy has dropped to 75%. That's not a large drop. Vaccine's efficacy drops faster in three months than the Omicron-based uh, efficacy. So that was uh, good data, just that they did not express one side which was positive, and they expressed the other side which was alarming. But that alarm is just a very tiny change. The absolute numbers are tiny. The percentage is large. And then, even if the reinfection rate increases, but it doesn't do anything, then who cares? This is like getting common cold again. Sure. If it is common cold, fine. <laughs> if it is going to kill someone, that is the problem. Roller Girl says, thank you, Dr. Me. You're very welcome. Pitbull says, Dr. Bean trying to tell you about AstraZeneca blood clots, that they are agreeing with you on blood clots, that you were correct. 
Thank you very much. Many, many people have sent me this message that you were talking about it a year ago. And some said that you were talking about it first. But again, even when I was talking, I was taking the data from people who actually wrote those researches. So there were people first before me who knew this. I just started talking about it and the reasoning for this. And I still, there are two, three milestones in this whole teaching session where I had the worst kind of attacks back on me. Some of those I'm still going through. They created permanent issues that I'm still working through. And some were just, uh, so this was the first set of attacks. The very first attack occurred when I talked about hydroxychloroquine. That is very vicious. Um, because Trump had talked about hydroxy and the whole country became divided and the pathogen was new and the emotions were high. So that was the first time. Second time is when I talked about clotting. And the third time is when I talked about CDC using, picking and choosing the studies that they want. And I criticized a study on CDC's site. And the fourth time, which was the most vicious, was when I said the, um, the ADE ideas or such things are not accurate. And that is when a anyways yes <laughs> um, the benefit of these discussions or uh, these things to be known was that we could have managed them if we stopped resisting and we accepted that hey this can happen with the vaccine then remember in every talk i'll say we then we would be ready for it i even did a talk for how will a doctor manage clotting issues if it occurred I thought that somebody would take that and then say, okay, let's form a protocol and actually make that a general uh, solution after a vaccine, but it didn't happen. So I'm gonna continue to go back to the questions. Um, <clears throat> so I'm going back up to the questions. I'm trying to do them in the order they came in. Um, so if I miss some question, please write it down again. Ken says, do you want reality? Follow the money. Who, where, and how did this get started? Agreed. Um, Lisa says, any idea when Novavax will be in the USA? So they had said that by December, by the end of this year, they would have prepared to apply or applied. So hopefully they would apply. When will they get the FDA to do a discussion about it and then approve it or not approve it i don't know but they are getting ready to apply at least on the news in this year doctor i think you remember two days before i said omicron is going to end the pandemic very good Aralan. thank you very much for predicting that these are all happy news anyone who utters them we have a saying in our culture where we say that when something becomes more and more prevalent some statement becomes more and more prevalent on people's lips then it is something coming from the universe coming from the god whoever you believe in meaning it is an indication of things to come so this uh, message that hopefully the pandemic will be ending with omicron is becoming more and more prevalent so maybe it has a uh, it has a Potential, it seems like so. So good on you, Aralan. <laughs> Carol Vander Heaver says, "I'm dreaming too." <laughs> it is a time; it's morning, although there is uh, sun out there now. So there is a question from: Can you have depleted IgA in the serum, but still have? high IgA in the mucosal region, secretoria GA2. That is an interesting question. Normally, secretory IgA is the responsibility of the cells that are present in the uh, malt tissue. Malt tissue is the mucosa-associated lymphoid tissue that is the tissue around the mucosa. But what I don't understand from your question, depleted IgA in the serum, does it mean depleted because there is a defect in the immune system or you're just saying that IgA is less in the serum 
could this be still more in the mucosal surfaces? If that is a question, then yes. Most of the time, IgA is not the ne necessity to keep in the tissues, but it is important to have it in the secretory area. So the mucosal or malt tissue, mucosa-associated lymphoid tissue, makes more IgA. They switch faster to IgA as well. Sometimes, if we have respiratory type infections or infections of the wet surfaces, we get majority of IgA only in the mucosal surfaces and almost nothing in the um, tissues. Aaron Green says, we're celebrating a little pre-celebration. It is a pre-celebration. We might become sad, but I want to be happy when I can. I'll take it. Thank you very much. So who is the Twitter couple that hounds doctor? I'm hoping it's not a YouTube couple I watch. I'd be disappointed. Um, it's a Twitter couple. And they have uh, done this to many other doctors too. In uh, one of the prominent doctors' uh, expression, I was discussing that this person did this. And he had this person, this couple had done something to others too. And so this doctor I was discussing with, he said, they are evil. <laughs> that is the expression. Eric Dog says, could OMI be so weak that it could be a substitute for weakened virus wax job? <laughs> so if all of these things are there, I wish that it doesn't cause any more deaths. If that is the case, then it could be a good uh, competitor for vaccines. But because it still causes deaths, we have to be careful. Although vaccines do that too. So I hope you read between the lines. Aaron says, could you discuss something about the Cuban vaccine, Abdala? Okay. I have heard about this so much, I didn't do it yet. Um, sir, are there those S protein related side effects on DNA and other possible in an inactivated vaccine like Covaxin? No. So this, I have uh, explained it many times. That, vac that study is in vitro. And I said that a few days ago, that studies in vitro, and somebody responded and said, well, it could happen in vivo. No, not only it was in vitro, it was modified cells, modified cells, which were human embryonic kidney cells that were modified to have B cell genetics in them, also modified to have some other things in them to finally, so these were transfected cells and then the genes for the spike proteins. So this just too far-fetched that was the statement i made in the lecture as well that that was that is a far-fetched idea so no it is not going to happen in vivo christopher robinson says i'm reading a shot to save the world it is well worth well worth reading very good thank you So Aaron says, thank you, doctor. I am Tamil ethnic, world's oldest language and civilization. Very good. Thank you very much. I used to have a friend when I came to US. I had a friend. His name was Sultan. He was also Tamil. He was a very nice guy. Skyfrog says, it's nice having coffee with Dr. Bean in the morning. Regular time is too late for coffee. East Coast. Yes, actually, it is now 11, 11, 17. I was getting cold, plus I, till I take coffee, I cannot actually think <laughs> and perform well. So I just made coffee. Pitbull says, Dr. Bean has always been very careful and logical about all this. If he doesn't know the answer, he will say so. So 
it's no silly speculation. We see enough of that. Thank you very much. <laughs> Gold Country says, glad it's Sunday. After dinner, I will visit my little pony. His name is Apple Paste and I love him. Wow, really? So send, send us pictures. We'll put the Apple Paste pictures up. Aliji says, is Omicron really dangerous for cancer patients? Taking methotrexate 20 milligram tablets weekly, he has received two doses of AstraZeneca and Pfizer as a booster job. So I think more important thing is to understand their immune system's response. Um, if they are immunosuppressed enough that uh, they cannot handle the virus, then I looked at that case report. That woman was, it was a failed HIV therapy and she was in advanced HIV. She was what could be defined as uh, immunosuppressed. That was the definition of immunosuppression. And she had COVID. Two weeks later, she recovered with mild cases. She only needed oxygen for one day. And then she had the SARS-CoV-2 in her for 216 days. And it was just there. So I think predictions are difficult. But one should just do the best they can. Good that they have vaccines. Just be very, very careful. Anubhav says, hello, Dr. Bean, how are you? Been a long time. I'm doing very well. Long time. Now see, hopefully you're doing well as well. Aaron Adam says, do you think the rise in cases in Eastern European countries, such as Czech Republic and Lithuania, over the last couple of months mean that Omicron may have originated from there? Possible. Because remember, Botswana had Omicron before South Africa. And I'm sure that there were other countries that had it too. And I am sure that the countries that are saying, okay, lockdown, stop, they probably already have the, the Omicron. Two feathers, you're awesome. Thank you very much. So MGW says, what's the latest with Dr. Merrick in with Luffy, Luffy McLean's job. So he is suspended. I think he's going through the sessions with the hospital. But um, so he's correctly keeping it uh, because the information, uh, keeping the information low because he's going through the process. Excuse me. <laughs> Westfield says, good early morning, Dr. Bean. Very appreciative of you. Thank you. So uh, my son is sleeping. Luffy is outside. My wife is out walking and uh, right at four o'clock, I woke up, I started reading and then I think 5.30 or 6, I started doing these. So this is the third talk. So uh, now what says, as a follow up to those, do these intramuscular vaccines create secretory IgA2? Would an intranasal vaccine make more sense? Yes, in general, all vaccines, intramuscular or other, would eventually create IgA2 as well because our body knows that if I'm fighting a virus anywhere, I have to do some things more than just uh, attacking the virus or, or pathogen in an area of infection. And that is the body has to shore up the defenses throughout the tissues. So first, it, know, it knows that I need to quickly uh, clean the house. I need to quickly clear this, this pathogen. So what it does is the very first thing it does is it creates IgM. Okay, so one second. This software becomes weird sometimes. 
the first thing it does <laughs> look at the i have to close this and open this so give me one second this is an unsupported software mis made with mischief but it's a beautiful software okay so first of all it makes igm <clears throat> igm five of them tag together and they are sent out in the body so these are in the clusters of five and they are sent out in the body to say go wipe out this virus or bacteria wherever it is go bind with it so i call it a big vacuum cleaner so that is the first thing that body does after it has kind of tried to clean out the virus or the bacteria by sending out this huge uh, great amount of igm which are in this pentameric state binding state then what it does is it sends out IgG. IgG is one, it is a more long-term production. It can continue for months, years, number one. Number two, IgG has better biological actions as well. For example, it would trigger the inflammatory responses and so, so complement system and others. So it is more biologically active too. Number three, uh, another important thing is IgG can cross placenta and go to the baby. So so the body is thinking, all right, the mother may be sick. I need to protect the baby too. So it makes IgG, which can then cross placenta and go to the baby. And only IgG can do that. So now body has taken care of immediate cleaning of the pathogen. Then it is taking care of now more biological responses, more cytokines, more inflammation. So fight has started. Plus the baby is protected. Then Ig, Ig so MDG, E is created to prime the mast cells to say, hey, guys, be ready. If this thing comes in again, just attack it, which sometimes actually backfires on us and we get allergies. And then it makes IgA always, which would then be uh, number one, mucosal surfaces, and number two, in the milk. And body does this every time because not only a person may be, a woman may be pregnant, she may have a child that she is uh, feeding and body wants to protect that child as well. So body is going to send, make IgA in all cases, not only to just protect our mucosal surfaces, but also protect the baby that might be feeding. And that means in close proximity to the mother and might have the same uh, infection that mother has. So this is how body does it. The only thing is the uh, secretory IgA, IgA2, or uh, this two molecules combined together with the secretory protein part, they are produced more in quantity if the infection is more on the mucosal surfaces. So then the second part of your question, would, it, would an intranasal vaccine make more sense? Yes because that would trigger a larger quantity of IgA production. But IgA will be produced by all vaccines. You know, this is like when hurricanes or these storms, winter uh, storms come in, you will see that, for example, in Fro Florida or other places, they would close the doors, they, they would evacuate the people, they'll put the uh, shutters and, and protections around the windows and, and offices and so on. So all those readiness, parts of readiness are done every time an infection is. Now, which part is more intense depends on the route of the infection and type of infection and type of response and so many things. Very good question. Ashutosh says, are you seeing a third wave? So we have a fourth wave and it is a, so far, it seems to be a better wave than others. That is a good one. I like, I would like to see more 222 nanometer UV in shops, yes.
my lad Abu Al Hija says, if the immunity starts to make antibodies a few days after the infection, why then there are people who stay positive after a month of the infection or longer? Why they end up dying? So basic idea is because the immunity overwhelmingly responds. So our immune system becomes part part of the virus or becomes partner with the virus and just attacks our system. Now, it is not really that immune system says, you know what, bro, I am going to be on your side and let's kill this person. Actually, what happens is when virus comes and pokes our immune system, our immune system responds so vigorously that it cannot be controlled. And that is a defect in us. And that then causes us to die because of that overwhelming response, which is called cytokine storm. Now, you also said, why does it continue for months? So in some people, when the virus is gone, sometimes the virus debris continues to stay in the cells and it could stay for months to years. As one part, Dr. Bruce Patterson says, for years can stay in the monocytes. In the nasopharyngeal area, the debris of the virus, the broken messenger RNA pieces, may still be sitting in the cells for months or weeks and they would keep coming back as positive. So far, the idea of uh, a carrier state other than non-immunosuppressed or in healthy people is not observed. Skyfrog says, with Santa visiting households around the world, do you think we should leave out Luffy Mectin instead of cookies <laughs> for the reindeers? Of course, he's obese and probably, yes, yes. <laughs> and flu and low dose naltrexone and vitamin Ds and so on. <laughs> Look at this guy. So here is he saying, Koshino says, this bean guy is talking nonsense, just to make, um, nonsense is usually one word, not two words, just to make some money. He has some interesting videos, a lot of it is truth, but here he's just wasting you guys time. So, <laughs> so you're uh, good. So when you say you guys, between the guy and S, there should be an apostrophe so that the wasting you guys, um, guys time is a possessive. So you're saying time of the guys. So guys time. But if you want to say possessive with the plural, for example, guys is time, then you put an apostrophe, but don't put another S. So hopefully, while I'm wasting other people's time, Hopefully you can learn some grammar and maybe put better messages next time. It would help your uh, messaging capability. Okay, so what else? So PKT, PKT says, how about some of the newer monoclonal antibodies for prophylaxis, monoclonal antibody for the severely immunosuppressed, where even the vaccine can't help? So that is very important. For the immunosuppressed, monoclonal antibodies are important. And I heard from five, uh, AstraZeneca's uh, company, and I really wanted to discuss it, and Omicron happened that they said that their monoclonal antibody can last up to five months with protection. Normally, in us, when an antibody is produced, within two to three weeks, it is destroyed and removed. The antibodies that we buy from the, the market for our um, needs, for example, AstraZeneca, sorry, the Regenrons or other, they usually are modified enough to stabilize them for six to eight weeks. However, AstraZeneca says their monoclonal antibody can stay till fifth week, five weeks, 
And I think they said it's very similar to the way a vaccine would help as well because the vaccine efficacies are going down too. So yes, monoclonal antibodies are very important for immunosuppressed who cannot make their own antibodies or who will make lesser antibodies or who would make defective antibodies. So there was, Bob says, some new theory says that Omicron has merged with pieces of common cold virus, but less deadly. I don't think so. Maybe I'll have to read that. I don't think there is a lot of uh, research that has come out yet. This seems to be a rumor more than a uh, research. So Ghost Omega says, does the S protein have side effects in the subunit vaccine Novavax? So far, their side effects have not been very different from other vaccine side effects. The question in my mind is, uh, what about clotting or what about cardiac issues? And there were some signals, but I did not get enough data to see if this was happening or not. So hopefully with the FDA briefing, we'll know more because they have to provide a lot of data. Yude says, I do, how do I become a patron from India? Neither card nor PayPal processes the payment. YouTube is blocked. That is very interesting. Um, I have no idea. Um, I have no idea. I'm so sorry that I didn't think about this. I'll, I'll do some research. Maybe you can just buy Dr. Bean uh, plan and that is one way to support. So, <clears throat> Fletcher says, Hi, Dr. Bean, is natural immunity from previous COVID infection protective against Omicron infection? So, we had this uh, preprint from South Africa that showed that the reinfection protection drops from 85 to 91 percent uh, compared, to, so 84 percent is beta and 91 percent is uh, delta. From there, it drops to 75% for uh, Omicron. So that means it is still protective, slightly less protective. However, the researchers put the data in another way as well, where it showed reinfection rate is 2.39% times, sorry, not percent, 2.39 times more, which seems really bad. But number one, the cases are very mild. And number two, the protection drop is very, very minor as well. So that means this, if somebody is at risk and they have taken a vaccine and it has been some months or they had been infected, they may be able to take advantage of a booster. But again, when I say this, people start saying that I'm pushing the vaccines. Vaccines are a tool for, for uh, certain folks as well. And we should not just discard them because we, are, we don't like vaccines or we, we like vaccines. So for some people, it is really important, for example, immunosuppressed, to either have a vaccine or to have monoclonal antibodies. They need help. John Snyder says, going to have two variants spreading for a while, Delta and Omicron. So Catherine says, if interesting to anyone, had mild COVID November 20, got two Pfizer jabs last March 21, tested two weeks ago with 1348 antibodies, 0 0.8 being threshold for positive seems to be holding well. Yes. Yes. So very good. And this is not a problem that a mild or little common cold like COVID occurs after the vaccine. We have discussed it many times that how does that happen? So uh, Eric Doc says, can you do a bank to bank transfer? Yes. 
I usually try to avoid sharing my bank information, but yes, bank to bank can happen. So Nilesh says, Dr. Bing, can you talk more about effectiveness of Sputnik against Delta and Omicron? We can, I do not have the data. I've talked about Sputnik with uh, Delta, I have done that discussion. For Omicron, we'll see. I am hoping that before the times come that we have to do all this research once again with Omicron, hopefully everything just goes back to normal. So Pro P says, just dropping by, but like to say your videos are great. You're not afraid to go with where discovery is at, controversial or not, while drawing a line against the real crazies. Thank you. Thank you very much. So Jerry says, if a mutation occurs that evades the vaccine, would it be capable of binding to ACE2? So that is a thing. Virus has to evade the vaccine or the antibodies from previous infection or vaccine, but still bind with the, with the ACE2. And I have been saying it for a year, that if we change, if it changes its spike protein so much that it evades the vaccines and, and infections, then it would have a problem binding as well. Omicron seems to have found a way to be able to bind and enter the cell, but still kind of evade some of protection so it is able to replicate more, but it has given up something. And that is what I've been discussing as well, that the more transmissible it will want, want to become, it will have to become less lethal so that that is part of transmissibility to keep the host alive. I'll give you another example, which is interesting. Some of the new hackers, virus builders and hackers computer, they have become very sophisticated in making new viruses because in the older times, in my time, virus used to be a definition of somebody knowing computer sciences or computer programming so much that they can destroy somebody's computer. Nowadays, hackers and the viruses that are created, many of them stabilize your computer. They clean your computer. They make it better. They make it run better so you never suspect there is something so that they can harvest the information from the computer or take the banking information and whatever. Similarly, a virus that wants to be more transmitting and living, it will have to stabilize its host or it cannot stabilize us. It would have to be less damaging to us. So Omicron by accident has found a way to be less damaging, still be able to stay alive and transmit. So it has found those changes. How long can these changes be? Can it actually continue to spread and become dominant throughout the world? That would be, and stay this way. Can it actually give an offspring that is even more transmissible and even less lethal so that even the fewer deaths that we are seeing, even these are not happening, then that would be awesome. I see that there is a VNE says GB. Good question. Where is that question? I want to see a good question. All are good question. So JLB, no child has died with the Omicron, but there have been other deaths. So if I go here to this one, there were 10 deaths in the SBAHTDH cohort in the past two weeks, making up 6.6% .6 of the 166 admissions. Four deaths were in adults aged 26 to 36, and five were in adults over 60. One death was in a child in whom the cause of death was unrelated to COVID. So I am assuming from this phrasing that these other four deaths and then uh, five deaths are because of COVID. Then they say there were no COVID-related deaths among 34 admissions in the pediatric COVID wards over the last two weeks. So this is so th there are deaths that are related to this Omicron.
<laughs> Skyfrog says, which computer vaccine do you prefer? Norton, McAfee, or others? So I remember I used to have Norton. And then uh, at some point, McAfee as well. Then remember, Java bought, I think they bought Norton, that whenever you'll install Java, Norton will be installed, or they became a partner with them. And then finally, I moved to Max. When I went to Mac, I did not need any anti vaccines. So now I'm back to Windows for this talk. This is a Windows machine. And I think it has a, a bunch of anti viruses. I have not seen exactly which one because so far everything is in warranty and pre installed. I will check it up. <laughs> VNE says, GB question, sir, can inactivated vaccine cause ADE hypothetically as they will also generate antibodies other than antibodies, SN antibodies? So short answer, no. And the reason for that, I discussed a couple of videos ago, ADE needs this virus to be able to escape phagolysosomes. This virus does not have that capability. And then there are some mechanism of ADE where we say that a complement system might help the virus enter the cell without a phagolysosome. But that has never been observed with coronaviruses. Never. Even in the in vitro study where they wanted to do it, it did not happen. So ADE is not a point with coronaviruses. And coronaviruses have a membrane that is very delicate. They have to figure out some way to escape acidity of a phagolysosome. They do escape our acidity in the stomach, but that is a very different behavior. When they are stuck in that jail of phagolysosome and we are throwing proteases and we are throwing DNases and RNases on them, it's and we are throwing reactive oxygen species on them, they just cannot survive it. Most of the ADE pathogens either know how to evade the phagolysosome before the, the enzymes start attacking them, or when the enzymes attack them, they use that acidic environment to become active. They have weapons that become active using that acid, and then they slash around and come out. SARS-CoV-2 cannot do that, and it cannot find a way to do that. So those who keep pushing this, they should learn some more physiology and immunology and microbiology. Gabby says, and also unvaccinated aren't more ill. That is correct. So if you see here in the data, this is correct that majority of the people in the hospital are unvaccinated. And if you see here, of 38 adults in the COVID wards on 2nd December, six were vaccinated, 24 were unvaccinated, and eight had unknown vaccination status. Of nine patients with COVID pneumonia, eight are unvaccinated. So the ones who had the lung issues, lung damage occurring, eight are unvaccinated out of nine. One is a child. Only a single patient on oxygen was fully vaccinated but the reason for the oxygen was chronic obstructive pulmonary disease. So the vaccination does have a benefit. It does have its side effects as well. And I wish that we can, we are able to. So look, a doctor should be, I, I tweeted that as well. If I pick up any pharmacology books from here, that book would talk about any drug in it by saying drug X, formed this way, pharmacokinetics this way, and then it would say benefits and indications, when to use it, what are the benefits, and then it would say contraindications, and then toxicities. Then it might even say that what is the antidote to the toxicity. This is how every drug is discussed. Similarly, doctors should be able to discuss a medicine, vaccine, with its benefits and its side effects, and the remedies for the side effects and the indication for when to use it. It is a weird thing that whenever I talk about vaccines benefits, people start attacking me that you're a vaccine pusher. Whenever I talk about vaccine disadvantages or side effects, people start attacking me saying that you are a vaccine denier. What they don't understand is this has to be studied together. 
that is how medicine is studied M. Gregory says, how many with natural immunity, unvaccinated, were affected by Omicron? So we saw that uh, in that report. Uh, I don't remember off the top of my head. We can look into it. That report had a couple of interesting things for me. One, it said, we are assuming everyone to have previously been infected. We did not know their vaccination status. That is one which makes that study a little less useful to me. Second part that was less interesting, but I was I really hoped it was there was the severity of the cases. Sure, there are more cases than what? If they are all like common cold, who cares? But if they are really bad or majority of them are becoming bad or a bigger percentage is becoming bad, then we have to understand what is going on that data was missing as well. Bubble Rapper says, agree Dr. Bean, we should be able to be honest with patients about risks versus benefits of vaccination instead of just saying safe and effective without clear data. And I think on the flip side as well, we should also just not say that this is a gene therapy, this is a poison, this is going to kill everyone. We should also talk about what are the legitimate side effects and how to manage them and where are they occurring and so on. For example, I saw this tweet from Dr. John Breen. He's been on my show sometimes. I want to see if I can bring it up again. He had done a very interesting uh, tweet. So he's an emergency care doctor. He's, I wanted to actually request him to come in once more. Let me see if I can find his tweet. I remember I had put it somewhere. I will have to find it. Give me one second, please don't mind. Um, I may have to search for him. So look at this uh, tweet. Just saw my first pulmonary embolism in a patient with booster two weeks ago. Third possible vaccine related injury today. I can't be the only emergency room doctor to be seeing this, right? Where are my colleagues? And then if you follow this, you would see some other folks are saying that we are seeing it as well. Uh, then there is a person who responded to him. She said, I am 52 and I got that as well. So it is not just happening in youngsters. The point I'm making is this has become so political and so muddied that the legitimate discussion of here is a vaccine and here is the negative it can do. That discussion is not allowed because anyone who starts that discussion is immediately called anti-vaccine and attacked or censored or suppressed or shut down. And anybody who, then there is this other group that anybody who talks about the benefit of a vaccine is immediately attacked and censored and shut down and, and uh, called names and complaints. So both sides have to uh, allow the legitimate discussions to occur so that safety can actually happen. Jody says, is, the, is that true that people who have booster got Omicron? No, 
that's not so omicron is nothing to do with uh, these things anyone can get omicron that is true it could be boosted not booster vaccinated unvaccinated previously infected not infected but fortunately so far its percentage of damage is really low and hospital length is only 2.8 days no oxygen requirement mild cases mostly managed in outpatient so profile looks great i hope it holds up <laughs> now what says my macrophages may be dumb but they're not stupid they are awesome without macrophages we cannot even sustain a single day Just saying says, is it possible that Omicron is much more infectious but replicates slower and therefore does not cause the huge response by the person's immune system? Possible. So somebody asked me that what is the reason that it is behaving this way? I actually don't know yet that what mutations are doing what. From a clinical point of view, we can say that yes, there is mutations, the the phenotypical outcome, the, the clinical, the observable outcome is more transmissible, less lethal. Now, researchers would connect that this mutation did this and this mutation did that. So we'll see in the coming days. But will you're correct. So if the end game is not to destroy or kill a host, but to be less lethal to stay alive, what is the point of a virus to stay alive? Virus's total mission is to just keep sustaining. And for that, it needs to become adapted to, to us. Or you know that from one virus to the next daughter, there is no brain activity happening. They're not thinking. It says that virus is just making randomly a lot of variations. And those variations that are lethal to the host, they die with the host. Or host figure out vaccines and masks or isolations or quarantines or some ways to protecting themselves. Vitamin Ds sunlights, whatever it is. And that thing ends up dying because host would not allow the virus to just do this. On the other hand, if the virus copy formed accidentally, randomly, is a better copy in this way that it can live with the host, then hosts would exchange that to each other, give it to everyone, and now that has greater number of copies and that is how it is sustaining. So it doesn't really plan anything, but it, this is how it ends up uh, becoming humanized. And I have given this uh, um, example in the past, about a year or more ago, that when they make um, weakened virus vaccines, the, the virus that has become weakened, the vaccine is made by taking a human virus, and putting it with chicken cells. And now that human virus is standing there scratching its head saying, I do not know how to work with a chicken cell, I'm a human virus. And then one, two copies will be able to enter the chicken cell. When they do that, then they will make more of their copies. And the researchers, after some time, will wash this dish, petri dish, and all the ones, human viruses that could not enter the chicken cells, they will be washed away and then they will open up the chicken cells and inside they would find a few viruses that were actually good, virus, good that they could enter the chicken. They knew somehow because of their mutations. Then they would take them and put them in the chicken cells again. And they would do this 120, 130 times. That way, that virus will become efficient in living in the chickens and forget how to live in humans. Then they would take that virus and give it back to a human. Now when it comes back to the human environment, the virus is scratching his head saying, how the heck do I infect this thing? Because they've forgotten, they've done enough mutations to now learn to live with the chicken. And then the immune system would come and kill them and also learn how to attack them. So when the actual humanized virus comes in or human virus comes in, they can attack it. So this is a normal behavior. It's just that some folks kind of uh, mixed it up for us to make us scared. These mutations are usually towards 
making a human cove. Okay, so here we are. I hope this is a good enough time for today. <laughs> Sky frog says good for humans, bad for chickens. But hopefully in the lab environment, so they don't release it. Um, so I hope this is good enough time. I hope uh, we all learned something together. Please uh, like, subscribe, and share. And if you would like to support this work, there are links in the description. You can be a patron. You can use Buy Me A Coffee, or you can use PayPal. Thank you very much. Have a great rest of the weekend. I will see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.